Okay, good day ladies and gentlemen. What are you going to demonstrate today? Okay, before that, I'm Dr. Saniel and the cameraman, or the camera person is Sonia Langley. I know all of you are dying to see my face, especially Sonia here. But unfortunately, the formalin smell is too strong for me to show you my face, but I can promise you I will show you my face later on. Okay, so here it goes. So this is a full specimen of the brain. And what we have done is, we are taking serial axial sections of the brain. And just to expedite the process, we have already taken a few axial sections. As you can see in this first section here, the outermost portion that you see here is the cortex. And if you see very closely, on the, just deep to the cortex is the subcortical white matter. This is the subcortical white matter. This is the first most superficial serial section. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove this section, which I have already taken. Now the section has gone one level deeper, approximately one, seven, one centimeter deeper. And now you can see the same thing even more clearly. You can see the outer cortex, and you can see the inner subcortical white matter. The outer cortex and the inner subcortical white matter. Now let's take this section also off, another one centimeter off. We can see the same thing in further detail here, outer cortex, outer cortex, and the inner subcortical white matter. At this level, let me reiterate something which we already know. This subcortical white matter, or the central white matter as we call it, is the site of demyelination in multiple sclerosis. And what does this white matter consist of? It consists of three different sets of fibers. Medial most will be the Abyssal fibers, just lateral to them on either side will be the projection fibers going up and down, and further laterally will be the association fibers connecting each half of the cerebral hemispheres with its respective components. Now let's go one further layer deeper. And voila, we can see the beginning of the body of the lateral ventricles. There you go. This is the body of the lateral ventricle on one side, this is the body of the lateral ventricle on one side, and in the next section we'll see further as we go along. So this is the body of the lateral ventricle. Incidentally, for those of you who will be having some doubts, this is the longitudinal fissure. So this is one hemisphere, this is another hemisphere. Further details we shall see in the next section. So now let's remove this layer also. There you go. And here we can see even more clearly. Let me show you a few structures in this. So, this is the body of the lateral ventricle, which is in the parietal lobe. This is the anterior horn, anterior horn of the lateral ventricle, which is projecting into the frontal lobes. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle, which is projecting into the occipital lobes. If you see clearly this thin sheet of matter here, this is the septum pellucid. And we have already seen the septum pellucidum is a double layered membrane. Here you can see it as a thin sheet and it separates mostly the anterior horns of the two ventricles. So this is the septum pellucidum. This structure that you see here, this is the genu of the corpus callosum. And this structure that you see here is the splenium of the corpus callosum. This is the septum pellucidum. Incidentally, there are a few other structures which I would like to sh show you here right now. This bulging structure that you see here, which forms the lateral wall of the anterior horn, is the head of the caudate nucleus. The head of the caudate nucleus. And you can see the body of the caudate nucleus is continuing, and this is going to be the one which forms the floor of the body of the lateral ventricle. And the tail of the caudate nucleus will go further down. We shall see it in a subsequent picture. To continue with our demonstration, this structure that you see here, the small bulge, is the thalamus. And this shallow groove between the body caudate nucleus and thalamus is known as the sulcus terminalis. The place where the body meets with the posterior horn, you can see the trigone. And the trigone has got a thick choroid plexus, which is called the glomus. This is the one which is calcified in most people. This is the glomus. Trigone is the meeting point of the body, posterior horn, and the inferior horn which will go into the temporal lobe. 
and the coronary plexus here is particularly thick and it is calcified in most people. This is the one which is seen in normal x-rays. So these are the structures that we can see here. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a further serial section, axial section, and we'll go even one centimeter deeper down. This, what you see here, is known as a Furcos brain knife. It's sharp on both the sides, and it's been designed in a specific way because it slices through the brain matter just like your knife slices through your warm butter on your breakfast table. Just think of it that way and you'll enjoy it. So one more section. There we go. We have the structures of the basal ganglia in front of us. We have the structures of the basal ganglia in front of us. Let us see. So, to continue with where we had left off, you can see this is the anterior horn. Anterior horn. Septum pellucidum, head of the caudate nucleus, thalamus, lentiform nucleus, and this structure that you see in between the two is the internal capsule. So, internal capsule is indented from the lateral aspect by this gray matter here. This whole thing is the lentiform nucleus. So, lentiform nucleus indents the internal capsule from its lateral aspect and gives it a V-shape. So therefore this is the anterior limb, the genu, the posterior limb. Lentiform nucleus as we start study today is divided into a lateral component which is known as the putamen and a medial component which is known as the globus pallidus. But we cannot distinguish it clearly here but this whole thing is the lentiform nucleus. What you see here is the head of the caudate nucleus which constitutes the anteromedial boundary of the anterior limb of the internal capsule and the thalamus forms the posterior medial boundary of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So these are the three structures which demarcate the internal capsule. We will take a further slice a little later, but let me show you something else here. So before I proceed, the same things can be identified on this side also. You can see the caudate nucleus here, the head of the caudate nucleus, nucleus to be more precise. This is the thalamus, this is the lentiform nucleus. And in between the two, we have this. This is the internal capsule here. Incidentally, take a good look at this structure here. This is our insula. And this is our insula. This is the insular cortex. This is our septum pellucid. And we can see a little bit of the fornix visible here and we can of course see the choroid plexus. To reiterate what I had said in the previous section, this is the genu of the corpus callosum. And this is the splenium of the corpus callosum. Please take a good hard look. And here you can see the posterior horn much more clearly, extending into the occipital horn lobe, and we can see the posterior horn very clearly here. And we can see the trigone very clearly with its choroid plexus here, and the trigone with its choroid plexus here. If I were to put my finger here, my finger is going into the inferior horn. It is going into the temporal lobe. Likewise, if I were to put my finger here, it will go into the inferior horn. So this is the posterior horn, much more clearly visible. Now I'm going to take a further section. This is going to be a little dicey because I have to take a very thin slice. But I try to do it. So this is the, a very important view which everybody should familiarize themselves with because these are the type of sections that we are going to get in our MRI and CT scans. And we should be able to identify. In this particular orientation, I can see it very clearly with the lighting. The lentiform nucleus, caudate nucleus, thalamus with the internal capsule. We can see that it has got a slightly striated appearance. That is because the white matter from the internal capsule go through the gray matter of the lentiform nucleus and the caudate nucleus, the corpus striatum. That is why the term corpus striatum or the neo striatum is used. Okay. 
Now let me take one more section and this is going to be a very thin slice.